Mr. President, Veterans Day is approaching on Wednesday. And as you know, this is a very, very important day across the country. It's certainly an important day in my state of Alaska, where uh, we have a statistic. I certainly like to talk about it a lot in hearings and on the Senate floor. But Alaska has the highest number of veterans per capita of any state in the United States. It's truly an honor to be serving a state that has so many veterans who have served our country and look at Veterans Day as a really very important and very somber day. We're also home to thousands, thousands of active duty, military members, reservists, in large part because of our strategic location in Alaska. So I was home, like a lot of members of the Senate this past weekend, and in Alaska we're already beginning to celebrate Veterans Day in churches, in community halls, private homes, parades. Now this weekend I had the honor of attending a few of these events, a parade in Anchorage, a wonderful church service yesterday. And it's so moving to see and hear from all of our veterans. And I had the opportunity to do that this weekend. World War II veterans, greatest generation, Korean War, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, Cold War veterans. And I went to a number of these uh, events and an issue came up. An issue I think it's important for this body to know about, that our constituents are asking about. What the heck is going on in Washington, D.C., where senators are filibustering the funding of our troops? What's going on? It's a good question. You know, Mr. President, that confirms something that I think a lot of us sometimes forget. We look at the, the procedural maneuvers here on the Senate floor, filibusters, blocking funding for our troops, and sometimes we think that the American people aren't watching. Well, they're watching, and our troops are watching. Not only our troops at home, but importantly, our troops overseas who are literally right now risking their lives during this Veterans Day week, protecting our nation, protecting us, protecting our security. They're watching, and so are their families. And when members of this body decide to block funding for our troops, known as the Defense Appropriations Bill, the people know it. They especially know it when it's happened on this floor, not once, not twice, but three times. Three times. The minority leader and the other side of the aisle decided to filibuster our troops in terms of their funding. What's really amazing about that, Mr. President, is that that bill came out of the Appropriations Committee with a huge bipartisan majority. So very bipartisan to support our troops. So why? Why? I was asked this back home. And Mr. President, I truly could not provide a coherent answer for the veterans, for their families, for our troops. You know, I've heard a number of reasons on the Senate floor as this is being debated. I believe the minority leader said it was a waste of time. Guarantee you the vast majority of Americans don't agree with him on that. Some, something about Republican tricks with regard to the budget deal. I, I, I just don't know why we would filibuster the defense appropriations bill that funds our troops three times, including last week. I wish the minority leader would come to the floor and give a simple answer why he insists on continually filibustering funding for our troops during the week of Veterans Day, and more importantly, when thousands, thousands of young American men and women are risking their lives right now, right now, defending this nation overseas. Because some are starting to fear 
that members of this body are not putting our troops in terms of the highest priority. They're starting to fear that we're not concerned about the welfare of our troops and our nation's security. Now, I don't believe this is the case. I have the honor of sitting on the Veterans Affairs Committee, the Armed Services Committee, and I believe that that is a very bipartisan committee where everybody is focused on our national security and our troops. As a matter of fact, I talked to a reporter last week and told her about, on the Armed Services Committee, how so many members on both sides of the aisle come together and focus. But you know, Mr. President, we have veterans in this country who still carry scars of their military service that was not supported by the public, that was not supported by the Congress. In particular, our veterans, many of our veterans who served in Vietnam, who came home, who were ridiculed, who were not treated well, who were spit on, we can never, ever go back to that shameful period of American history. Never. Mr. President, this week we have important work to do on these issues. We have a military construction and veterans appropriations bill that we're going to be voting on in the next few days. Again, that was previously filibustered. I don't know why, but it looks like we're going to move forward on that. We have a Defense authorization bill, hugely important for the men and women of our military, vetoed by the president. Again, not clear why the president vetoed that, but we're going to take that up again. The bottom line is enough playing politics with our troops, their families, and our national security. It is time to come together during this week, of all weeks, the week of Veterans Day, come together in a bipartisan way on these important bills that were taken up this week to support our troops, to support our veterans, to support our national defense in the finest tradition of this body, in the finest tradition of the U.S. Senate. Filibustering defense appropriations bills three times is not in the finest tradition of this body. We need to move beyond that. Doing so this week, the week of Veterans Day will send an important message to the American people that we know what the highest responsibility of the Congress is to defend this nation and to take care of the troops and the veterans who have sacrificed and who we honor this week. Mr. President, I yield the floor.